Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Carrie, and I am filming from my backyard hammock because it is a gorgeous fucking day today. I am so ready for fall. Like, this is starting to feel like fall weather to me, and I am very, very happy about it. I'm going to kind of try to give you a glimpse of my backyard. It might flip the camera, but this is my view. The neighbors behind us put up that pretty white fence. If you look at the end, you can see how it kind of runs out before we quite get to the end <laughs> of our yard because we were too cheap to pay to add it to our yard but it looks really pretty for a good two sides of our yard um but yeah there's the trees they're not quite turning brown well, they're starting to a little bit actually but it's just a gorgeous day and i felt like spending some time outside I figured I'd just catch up on the events of the old day. Brian and I, um, first thing this morning, I actually really didn't want to do my workout, but I did. I made myself. I got on my stationary bike and I rode for 20 minutes and I actually managed 3.54 miles, which is tied for the most I've ever done since I just started working out about three weeks ago. I haven't been religious about doing it every day, but I'm really trying hard to keep it to um, at least three to four days a week. I've messed up because I've been sick. Today is officially the beginning of week two, I think, or week three, rather, of me being sick. It's day 14 or 15. Um, I mean, I'm fine. I'm not contagious or anything anymore. It's really just congestion and, like, you know, yucky, you know, feeling in my throat and still a bit of a, a, bit of a cough, but... Um, I'm, I used up all my antibiotics, I used up all the cold meds the doctor gave me, so I'm just taking over-the-counter um, cold pills and, um, did I say cough meds or cold meds? Cough meds is what I meant to say. And then um, just, uh, you know, generic Robitussin, so I feel really, really good. I mean, we went out to lunch today. I did, I did my workout, like I said, I, I did 3.54 miles on the bike in 20 minutes. I ride for 20 minutes or until I hit three miles. Like one day it actually took me 21 minutes to hit three miles. I was a little off my pace and I was like, I really just feel like three miles is a good, you know, baseline to hit. So I did do the extra minute one day, but every other day that I've done it, I've managed to hit at least three miles within the 20 minutes. So that's really, really good for me because I am not a fan of exercise at all. I really don't enjoy it and it's, it's hard. But I'm really trying. And then I took my little shower. My hair is still actually wet, even though it's hours later. A little bit wet. Not wet, wet, damn. Um, and then we decided we wanted to go to this place that we read about online called On the Border that apparently on Monday offers all-you-can-eat enchiladas. And that just sounded really good to us. Um, again, you know, kind of defeats the purpose of working out. But hey, I could have eaten the enchiladas and not worked out. So there's that. But it was really, really good. It was like eleven ninety nine, and I ended up ordering two plates, which was four fucking enchiladas and two servings of beans and rice. So I pigged the fuck out. But um, first plate, I got two beef ones. And then um, the second plate, they also had cheese ones and chicken ones. I got the two cheese, and Brian got two chicken, and then we swapped one of each so we could try all three. And they were all really, really good. And it came with chips and salsa, too. And um, we had that for lunch, but I was good. I just had water, even though they had a frozen watermelon margarita that looked super delicious. But I was a good girl, and I had water. And then on the way home, we stopped, and I got a pumpkin spice signature latte from Dunkin' because they are on sale if you have the, the Dunkin' Rewards. Um, you get a size medium one for only three bucks, which is tremendous considering yesterday I went and blew $5.65 plus tax on a fucking medium pumpkin spice ice latte at Starbucks, and it wasn't even good. It really wasn't. Um, I posted this on my Facebook yesterday, so some of you might have seen this, but um, I've come to the conclusion that I like the idea of pumpkin spice lattes a lot better than the actual drink, at least the Starbucks ones. I get all excited because it's like, to me, it's kind of like the unofficial start of fall when pumpkin spice lattes come out. And then I get one every year, and every year I go, did they change the recipe? This doesn't taste as good as I remember it from last year. And finally, after like however many years it's occurring to me that I do the same thing every year and I doubt they're changing the recipe. It's just that I remember it better in my head than it actually is in reality. But um, the Dunkin' drink, it's 
bigger. It's much bigger, I think, than the grande size drink I got at Starbucks yesterday. It's all squished because I have it like in my folded up Indian style legs. But um, it's really, really tasty. This is the signature latte. So it's got, you know, I got, I went the full Monty. I got it with the whipped cream and, you know, the syrup. And I think they sprinkle cinnamon on top. Really, really good. Yesterday I did, um, I ordered it with skim and I didn't get the whipped cream or anything. But it tasted funky. Like something, like not bitter. Maybe it was bitter. I don't know. I'm not good with like knowing my different bits of my sense of taste. I know it's like, what is salt, sweet, sour, bitter, and umami, I think, or what they say are like the five different bits of your palate. I don't know. But the point being, it really wasn't very good. I was super disappointed. And I only get Starbucks if I have a gift card. Generally, I do have a Dunkin' gift card on me too, because I do a lot of surveys online. And sometimes you can cash out and get free gift cards. And Dunkin' is luckily widely available. But if I don't have a Starbucks gift card, I will not buy Starbucks. They are so fucking overpriced to me. And honestly, in an almost head-to-head -head comparison, I got my PSL, I want to say, probably around 4 or 5 last night. And right now it's 2 o'clock almost. So less than, you know, 24 hours ago, I had that drink. So that's close enough to be head-to-head -head in my book. Wasn't impressed. Was not impressed by the Starbucks one. So I have to really try to remember, like document it. Like I'm documenting it in this video. I document it on Facebook. Do not bother with the pumpkin spice lattes at Starbucks anymore. It's not worth the money and it doesn't taste as good. So once this sale ends at Dunkin' on the signature pumpkin spice, um, I think it's signature pumpkin spice latte is what they call it. Um, I'll just get a regular iced coffee with pumpkin just to compare because those are less caloric. I mean, those I just tend to not get with the whipped cream and I tend to remember to get skim instead of regular milk. Uh, I didn't even remember to order that today, but um, I, I don't care. I'm whatever, I'm being bad today. It's one day, it's not gonna kill me. But this is a lot tastier than the Starbucks drink. So yeah, just putting that out there for the universe. Not a Starbucks girl. They sometimes have cute merch. I have a few um, tumblers and things that I've gotten there. And generally, I guess if I'm gifted, you know, gift, yeah, gift cards from them from now on, I would probably use it more towards merch or maybe food because the drinks are just not worth it. Although I do like their iced teas and their lemonades. Like they have like a, an Arnold Palmer type thing that I like. And you know, for non-coffee drinks, I guess, they're not as outrageously overpriced, but yeah, just to remind myself as much as you guys, don't waste your money on Starbucks, Carrie. It's really, really, truly not worth it. So, yeah, there's that. But right now I'm just, like I said, I'm laying in my hammock, enjoying the breeze. You can probably hear the wind and some of my mom's wind chimes in the background, which is very relaxing. In case you're wondering, because people often ask, my shirt says love always. Not always like one word, but love always, like love in all the ways you can love. And it's a, um, it's a Ray Dunn, like muscle shirt. It's funny to say muscle shirt because I have no muscles, but I guess that's the style of it because it's not a full true tank. Um, but I got this a couple months ago at Marshall's and I really like these shirts a lot. I like the positive statements. I like the tie-dye. They're really, really comfy and well-made. And actually what was really fun is that these Ray Dunn ones actually came with um, tie-dye scrunchies. So I think it was $10 for the shirt and the scrunchie. You can't really beat that. I got a couple other ones too. I think I have a one that says equality like in black with rainbow letters and then I think I might have a third but I don't remember for sure and I don't know what it says but I got rid of so many clothes recently you guys I've been really 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 trying to declutter and you know that's so fucking hard for me but it has to be done it's ridiculous I think I donated six good size not outdoor garbage bags, but like tall kitchen bags, the stretchy ones, um, at least six bags of clothes I've donated over the course of the past few weeks. And that probably sounds obscene. Like, why do you even have that many clothes that you wear, let alone that much that you can donate? But again, it's because I am a massive collector. It's really, really, really hard for me to part with things, even things that, you know, like 
clothes. Who gets sentimentally attached to clothes? But I get sentimentally attached to everything. It's it's a real problem in my life. But I'm really proud to say that I got rid of like six bags of clothes. And um, I could probably get rid of even more if I was, you know, being even more selective. But right now I feel okay with what I've done so far. And I'm the, the main point is I'm not going out and buying more stuff. Like, I was in Target yesterday, and they had a really cool Pride shirt, and it was like $4 and change, because it was 70% off clearance in Pride Month, and it was black, and it said Ally in it in rainbow letters, and I really, really wanted it, but I said, you know what, that's stupid. You just went to all this trouble to get rid of clothes. You have more than enough t-shirts you literally could shop your own stash and you know you like find stuff you don't even you know you didn't even remember you had so it's absurd to buy more clothes so I did buy one thing I did get some overalls the other day at the Gap because um I went to my friend Terry's apartment and she was wearing them and I was like oh my god you look so fucking adorable and I haven't had uh, overall since the 90s and I've always loved the look and I was just like oh my god they were like the most perfect ones because they were like just the right shade of blue the cut was really flattering and she's like I just got these like last week at, at the gap so I was like oh my god I'm gonna have to go look so that became like my mission a couple of days ago I um when she bought them they were one particular sale price and then when I went the other day they were a much higher sale price and I talked to the girl in the dressing room. She's like, yeah, unfortunately, the Gap is famous for that. Like, I don't know from one day to the next, you know, what's going to be on sale and what price it's going to be that day. But I said, well, if I were to open up a Gap credit card, would I get a discount? And she said, yes, you definitely would. That changes all the time, too. But I think you get 30% off. So I was like, dude, okay, I'm getting these fucking overalls because I really wanted them. It, they were just uh, way too spendy for me, but I was just like, I don't know where else I'm going to find any, and these fit really cute, and like I said, the color was really cute. I normally go for flare or bell bottom, or um, not flare or bell bottom, um, flare or boot cut, but these are tapered, and they're just to the ankle, but they looked just, I don't know, they just felt right. And they'd be really cute with like, you know, a nice pair of clogs, which I'm living in right now. Um, well, they're sort of like clogs, they're mules, I don't know. But, um, or like just some cute little boots in the fall. I'm just, I'm, I love them. And I ended up getting a really good deal because they ended up being even cheaper than they were marked, which is really weird. Okay, let me just start with this. They were marked at $79.95 and there was nothing indicating that they were on sale at all. Then the girl that I asked to help me find them scanned them and she said they were on sale for $55. And I was just like, wow, okay, still too spendy for me. But if I can get a discount off of that with opening the credit card, and then I don't know why, but they rang at like $39 or something before the 30% came off. So long story short, I ended up paying like $28 plus tax which was fucking outrageous. And I will probably never use the card again, but I don't mind having it because technically I know that um, card holders get a lot of better, like you get advanced notice of, of special sales and coupons and stuff at a lot of places. And I don't shop at the Gap all that often anymore just because again, it's too spendy for me. But I do shop at Old Navy a fair amount and it's part of the same parent company. So the card can be used there as well, I believe. But um, I was really excited at the thought of just having it, you know, to get those extra promotions. And then the way I am with credit is generally if I can't afford to buy something outright and pay cash for it, I just don't need to have it. I mean, that's how I live my life most of the time, which is why not what I'm debt free. Um, but I live with my mom, you know, so I don't really have any huge expenses. I mean, the biggest things I've ever bought in my life were my car and that was I remember making the down payment of like two grand and it was like Ugh, I lost my shit and then um you know obviously the monthly payments for years to come and then I bought myself a laptop um I thought it was only like four or five years ago but I actually had a Facebook memory come up the other day I think it was more like six or seven years ago and I paid like 500 bucks for that but um I I don't charge things as a general rule so it was you know I said screw it though I'm just gonna get the card I know I have great credit because when I do charge things I tend to pay the bill off in full right away 
Um, I was in credit card debt at one point, um, a few years, well, more than a few years ago when Brian and I first got together, we went a little cuckoo crazy with the credit, taking, you know, a couple of trips. We went to California, we went to Florida, not realizing at the time we were going to end up living in Florida a few years later. And, um, I think we both got laptops back then and yeah, we were a little silly with money back then, but we've definitely, you know, gotten that in check, like 100%, not just because it's, it makes me feel better about how I'm living my life, but because it's necessity. I mean, we just don't have income coming in that we could afford to expend money like that. So, um, so anyway, so that's, that's what's going on. Um, like I said, now I'm just chilling in my hammock. I'm very, very content and comfortable right now. I don't think I'm going to move for a little bit. I'm just going to chill and drink my little pumpkin spice signature latte from Duncan and feel the 9,000 pounds like slapping right onto my fucking gut. I was so happy this morning because I was down another pound. I'm not weighing myself on a regular basis. I tend to do it on days that I feel like I might be skinnier it's weird like I have to do it first thing in the morning after I pee but before I eat anything and um I, I'm just I might as well tell you guys I don't I don't give a fuck I'm I'm about five foot seven maybe just a little shy of that and as of this morning I weighed 181 which is way more than I should weigh in my personal opinion but again that's all arbitrary depending on who you are and what you know how you feel comfortable my body doesn't feel good at this weight I feel like clothes don't fit right and I'm just not happy with how I look but I've been higher I've been I've actually crept pretty damn close to 200 pounds I've never hit that mark but I've been close I've been probably at least 195 I don't know if I've ever been higher than that but to be at 181 right now actually comparatively speaking you know feels pretty great I mean it's definitely down I, I gained a ton during the pandemic like most people did and I really only just started making concerted effort to work out less than a month ago and um, as far as food choices I mean today notwithstanding I really am trying to eat a lot better I've been incorporating more smoothies into my life, more cottage cheese and fruits. Thank you to my beloved Bet for influencing me in a good way and helping me figure out healthy things to eat that I actually really enjoy. And I find that my body craves them now, which is great. Um, do I slip? Of course. I ate some potato chips the other day. I'm not going to lie. You know, I'll eat a candy bar every once in a while. You know, I'm not like giving up the food that I like because life's too short, man. I, I would rather live my 600 pound life and not be able to eat the foods that I like you know and I don't mean that facetiously that probably sounded really bitchy and I didn't mean it to at all that was very disrespectful for me to say because props to people who go on that show and are really struggling struggling and suffering and make the effort to try to improve themselves so I, I feel really like that was really rude and obnoxious to say and I shouldn't have made that joke and I do apologize um and don't please don't by any means judge yourself based on the fact that I'm willing to put out numbers as far as height and weight because that has no reflection on you. Everybody has their own body type. Everybody has their own, you know, it was interesting the other day. Um, I was at my friend Terry's and, um, her friend, um, her friend, my new friend, her sister, Lisa, we were filming something and, um, like just in the midst of what was going on, I said, you know, like Lisa was trying to frame something that she was filming and I said well Terry and I are about the same height so like if I sat in her place you could probably frame it out and Terry and she said but, but Terry is way longer than you like from her her hips like to her head so basically she's got a longer like top half of her body I guess and maybe I have longer legs I don't know I've never really compared I just thought we were about the same height but it was just interesting to me when she said that because it was not something that ever occurred to me you know that you know you could be the same height as someone else but but still like you know your your torso may be longer than someone else's and your legs may be longer than someone else's and the the proportions of your body can be so different so i mean weight is just a number height is just a number i'm just re reference referencing i can speak referencing it just for my own like you know because this is kind of like a diary for me sometimes and it's just so that I can keep track you know in the weeks and months to come of where I was on this particular day and how I was feeling so I mean I feel okay 
um, what I'm wearing right now feels pretty comfy but I caught like sight of myself when we were walking around the mall after we ate lunch because the restaurant was at the mall um, I caught sight of you know of my profile walking past a store in the glass and I didn't like you know my stomach at all I still feel really really con self-conscious about that and I know I need to work on that and I'm hoping that the the, the bike will be enough to slim that down because I really despise crunches I'm just not a fan of tummy exercises which is probably why my tummy is my biggest problem area I have a few but that's my biggest one so I don't know we'll see how it goes um uh, yeah, my friend Terry also gave me a DVD of a workout that I have to try, and hopefully I won't, like, have a heart attack when I try to do it, because I'm so not a fit person, but I really, I really do want to look better and feel better. That's important to me, and I'm trying my best, you know, my best may not be your best, you know, and... Whatever it is that you can do, if even if it's just one thing, even if it's just cutting, you know, like I, I eat, say, you know, say you eat five candy bars a week, you know, cut down to four or three, you know, baby steps, every, everything that's a step in the right direction, doesn't matter how big the step is, you know, it's just moving in the right direction that's really most important. And then as time goes on and you can do better, then you do better. But I'm not going to beat myself up that I ate enchiladas today. I'm not going to beat myself up that I'm having this Starbucks today. I'm, I'm rewarding myself. This is not going to be an everyday thing. Tomorrow, we're going to the Bronx Zoo. And I won't, won't eat great there either, to be honest, because there really aren't super choices to make. But I'll be walking a lot. So I know that I'll walk off a lot of what I eat. And generally, when we go to the zoo, I drink nothing but water. So that's obviously going to be healthy, too. And then, you know, we'll see how the rest of the week goes after that. So I probably won't do my, my bike tomorrow unless I do it when I get home. I'm certainly not going to get up and do it before I go to the zoo and then wear myself out before I've even started walking. But I will wear my Fitbit and track my steps at the zoo because I'm curious to see how many I'll get in. We don't tend to go for like the whole, whole day. Well, we go for a pretty long time, actually. I think the zoo usually opens at 10. We're in line usually at like a quarter to, and sometimes they let us in a little bit early, and we usually leave by about two o'clock. And the zoo, I think, stays open till five or 5.30. But usually by two, we've done everything that we want to do. We don't necessarily get every single exhibit of the zoo done every time, but because we're annual pass holders, it's not a big deal. You know, we just pick and choose the things we most want to do on that particular day, because we know we can go back, you know, whenever we want to and do the rest. So, um, yeah, we tend to leave around 2 o'clock, that way we don't get stuck in rush hour traffic or anything. And um, a good four hours, you know, out in the heat and the sun, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot, you know, you do a lot of walking there. So it's, it's a really good day, it's a fun day, and I believe the high is only going to be like 80 or 78 or 9. I mean, I prefer a little cooler even than that, but when Brian was looking up the weather for this week, he said that tomorrow looks like a really good, you know, weather day for the zoo. We haven't been in a couple weeks, so I miss it. But um, they have tightened up their COVID restrictions again. Um, since COVID happened, since we bought our passes, which was back in May, so I mean, COVID was going a long time before that. But um, they've changed the rules regarding like whether or not you need to be masked to get into the zoo. Um, at first you had to be masked like all the time unless you were socially distanced outdoors and then they changed it to like just when you're at the indoor enclosures and now I think it's back to you you must be masked you certainly have to be wearing a mask when you enter the zoo and absolutely at all the indoor enclosures and I think they're actually going to tighten it up to proof of vaccination which I'm 1000% behind I am sorry but at this point if you've not been vaccinated what the fuck is wrong with you if you don't care about yourself, care about other people, you know? I mean, really, there's more to life than just you and your family, you know? You're harming other people by not being vaccinated, and you should care about other people. I mean, that's a given, right? So, yeah, I have no sympathy for people that say, oh, but it's not right. It's my right not to get vaccinated, and if I want to come into the zoo, well, no, fuck you. It's not your right to come into the zoo. Just like it's not your right to come into 7-Eleven without your shirt on. You have to fucking follow rules, just like everybody else. It's just really quite simple. 
You know, if you want to not be vaccinated, then stay the fuck home. Stay the hell away from me. Stay the hell away from my family. Stay the hell away from the people that I love and I want to keep safe and protect. And you st sit home and have COVID. You know, I, I, that's your, that's your choice. That's your choice. If you don't want to be vaccinated, you have the choice to stay the fuck home and stay away from me. I, I give no fucks with that. I really don't. I have no empathy, no empathy for people who make up all these bullshit excuses why they can't get it or why they won't get it. Every doctor pretty much out there will tell you that whatever risk there may be to you getting the vaccine is not as serious as the risk of not getting the vaccine and getting fucking COVID. So, I mean, I, I really just cry me a river. I'm not interested. And if that pisses people off, sorry, not sorry. My health and the health of like humanity at large is a lot more important to me than your right to not get vaccinated, which is ridiculous anyway. But on that happy note, because I'm running up to 26 minutes already, I didn't mean to ramble so long. That's just my random shit for the day. I hope it's beautiful wherever you are, whether it's the other side of the world and you guys are celebrating, you know, glorious winter or wherever it's like where you are. I hope that you are happy. I hope that you are healthy. I hope that you are well. And I will be back soon with more stuff, okay? Bye, guys.